Great. Excellent. Got it. All right. Um, so I'll go ahead and get us started. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Excellent. All right. So to everyone on this webinar, welcome to our inaugural webinar. Um, we're partnering with Josh Trent from Wellness Force and Breast.io and the Civilized Caveman. So Josh and I have worked together for the last couple of years. We've partnered on some different things. Um, he was gracious to interview me for a podcast a couple of years ago. And we were looking this year to try to provide some more value to both of our audiences. I know that um, for the Nibana customers, looking at different ways to use vagus nerve stimulation is really important um, to our audience. And what's really important for our group to understand is Josh's mission shines through in all of his work. And there is a lot of work that he does. He's a very hardworking man. Um, he really helps us as human beings optimize ourselves, heal ourselves through education, transparent communication, open conversation, and community. So Josh is going to uh, take us down the road to talk about breath work and vagus nerve stimulation, and maybe how we can optimize the two together and um, work on some weight loss. I Drop think de <laughs> definitely, definitely we're going to do that. And hello to all the participants. And Amy, thank you. The, the podcast we did reached so many people and it was truly exciting. And honestly, what a gift, right? We're in this world right now for everybody with us where I don't know if there's ever been a time that we're less stressed. Most people I know are dealing with excessive stress. And so thank you for the introduction. Just as Amy said, I'm the founder of Wellness Force Media. I'm the host of the Wellness and Wisdom podcast. If you want to listen to the podcast, we'll talk about that at the end. I want to get right to the value for you that are here and that you really want to understand how do we use this wonderful device that I've been using for a couple of years and how do we pair it with breath work? And what are all the advantages of that? Like what, what does this actually mean for us as a human being that's always trying to achieve homeostasis. So today we're going to talk about that. I have some slides. And if anyone has any questions, just please pop them in the chat. We'll have some time at the end of the presentation today for me to go over those. Um, but let's get right into it, shall we, Amy? All right. And Josh, I'm going to go off screen just so I'm not a distraction. Okay, I'll just be here in the background. All right. We'll say goodbye just for a moment. See you later. We're going to see Amy in a little bit. And I'm going to go over what we're really talking about today, which is if you are the person and let me know in the chat, if you're watching this live or on the replay, let me know if you're the person who's stressed, take a big breath in through your nose. And when you breathe in through your nose, let your belly rise. So I'll say that again, just as I say to all my students, inhale through your nose, belly rises. So do that now. Exhale through your mouth, belly falls. Just do a quick scan of your physiology. Where do you feel the most tension, the most stress, the most anxiety, maybe the most depression? Where do you feel the least at ease? Where is that in your body? Just do a scan. Whether you're scientific, whether you're spiritual, it doesn't matter. This presentation today, combining these two elements, right? The stimulation of the vagus nerve and breath work, they are complementary. You're going to learn something really potent today that I discovered, honestly, from meeting Amy, from coming across Nirvana, and from doing my own work in breath work over the past almost six years now. And I thought about how do I take two things that separately are powerful, but put together can be even more powerful. And that's what we're going to talk about today as it relates to stress, but really how stress relates to fat loss. So if you have any types of stress in your lower back, in your abdominals, in your feet, wherever that is. Just let us know. Don't be shy. Let us know in the comments. So let's start this conversation here. The place that you identified, wherever that was, somebody said uh, neck and back. That is a physical manifestation of something that's going on emotionally. We know that if you've been looking at the Zen or maybe you're already a Zen owner, we know that the direct impact of the vagus nerve goes into an ancient system in our body. So let's talk about exactly how to explore this system and really what are the biggest benefits of this system for us as a human being on planet earth. We're all on planet earth last time I checked. So I'm going to open up this quick slide deck here. Now, the power of breath work 
is something that everybody's heard of. Maybe raise your hand or let me know if you've heard of the term breath work. I promise you, it's not always work. That's one of the things that people get wrong about breath work. But if you're here, you've already gotten something right about your interest in the way that this device and really the function of your vagus nerve, how that gives your body this differentiation between fight and flight and rest and digest. So you can see there's two pictures on the screen right now. One of them is this device that we use on our left ear. That's the innervation that's shown on the left side of the facial nerve and the vagus nerve. As we go into this presentation today, what you're going to learn, and don't worry, I'll buzz through these fast. Words aren't as fun to read as pictures are to look at. Am I right? <laughs> I love pictures. I'm not that big at reading and presentations. We'll talk about the history. We're going to go over the three styles of breath work, the way you meditate with breathing, the way you have acute stress response practices for breath, and also catharsis. We'll talk about these concepts of circular and box breathing and how this really helps your immune system and calming your mind. We'll then talk about how we pair the Zen or the vagus nerve stimulation with breath work and really how to use these simple practical things that I came across through my own journey. My background is 10 years in health and wellness. I've trained uh, people in a fitness setting for over 10 years, 10,000 hours. I've been a podcast host for the Wellness and Wisdom podcast now for almost eight and a half years. So I guess you could say for the past two decades, I've been deep in this space. And so that's why I feel confident that I can show you the science today behind breath work for stress reduction, but I can also talk about the emotional intelligence side and the spiritual side. The last thing we'll cover is at the very end of this presentation, you want to stick around. I'm going to give a very, very special exclusive discount to join me for three weeks where I guide you personally on how not only to pair these things, but also how you can use breath to clear your stress. So now that we've gone over what you're going to learn, let's talk about the overview of modern day breath work. If you've ever breathed, then you know that when you breathe, you are relaxed. But what's really going on in the world right now is that there's ADHD, there's mood disorders, there's a lot of stress management programs, and a lot of wellness coaches and healers and therapists, and maybe people like you and I who are just more highly sensitive people. We identify with being more sensitive than others, whether you're a fitness trainer or just somebody that benefits from this. The overview of breathwork is that in modern day, in our modernity, where there's buildings and EMF and all these things going on, breath work is a skill. It's a skill. Most of us, we actually breathe wrong all day long. <laughs> I'm sorry to break it to you. It's, it's, I'm not here to shame anyone. I breathed before 2014 very, very wrong. Maybe in the very beginning, when y'all were breathing with me, you felt the inhale through your nose, but instead of your belly rising, your belly actually fell on the inhale. So you might be a reverse breathing pattern person. You might have tension when you breathe. You might lean forward with your posture. There's so many things that we'll talk about today that actually block breath. And we'll also do a breathwork demonstration. But what exactly is this? What exactly is breathwork? Well, like meditation, breathwork is a skill that you cultivate over time. But unlike meditation, breathwork is the very active form of clearing the mind. I always say that, and I learned this from my teacher, Belisa Vranich, breathwork is for people that can't meditate. So if you have a lot of challenge in your meditation, this is definitely something to look at, especially when we look at the way that this alters your physiology so that you're not in this constant state of fight or flight. But breathwork essentially is a field of a wide variety of therapies that use breathing exercises to improve the mental, physical, and spiritual health. I would also go so far as to say emotional and financial as well, which I'll talk about that. It is this science of the only lever we can pull, y'all, and I'm from Austin, originally from California. So if you hear me say y'all, that's why. Don't judge me for it. Don't worry. I don't own a cowboy hat. I might later, but it's all good. When we pull this lever, y'all, it is the only lever in our autonomic or automatic nervous system. It is the only voluntary and involuntary thing we can do that actually has a direct impact right now on our stress. And we'll talk about why. So what is the history of this? I didn't create it. When you took your first breath, when you came out of the womb of your mother, and at some point when we take our last breath, these breaths that we breathe, they are dating all the way back, not just to the first century here on the screen in India or Eastern practices like Tai Chi, they go back as far as human beings could record or that we've existed. So if it's the history of breath work that we're talking about, and breath is no more than an inhale, an exhale, or a hold. You can see the circle here on the screen. What modern science is showing us that 
these ancient practices that have been around for so long, it is this conscious circular breathing, conscious connected breathing that we'll practice today that actually allows you to transform your life. And I don't say that lightly. Look, a lot of the results I've gotten in my life, multiple six figures in my business, a family, a friend group, a life that I love, a life that I'm thriving in. A lot of this came from my commitment to learning about my stress and learning about the way that my stress dictates how much fat my body carries and how I feel throughout the day. So whether it's your brain, whether it's your body, modern science is showing us, and we'll get into the research here now, that when you start stacking our vagus nerve stimulation already on its own, a beautiful thing, you start getting a lot more benefits when it comes to the breath being paired or being Rubik's cubed into it. So let's talk about this, the diaphragm, right? Most people, they, you can see the, the study here on the screen, the effect of diaphragmatic breathing on attention, negative effect and stress in healthy adults. What they found was there was a massive physiological response over the span of people's lives that actually made them carry less stress. And when I say carry less stress, the only way that we can alleviate stress is by you learning how to breathe properly. Let me do a show of hands or just check in emotionally with me physically here on the presentation. How many of you feel when you are super duper stressed? Like you're like, F this, I can't do life. I can't do my day. I can't deal with my screaming kids. I can't deal with anything right now. I want you to check yourself in that moment and, and think, am I breathing? Am I actually breathing? Because 99% of the time, what I found with my students and also just being a human being myself, when I am in a state of anger or disconnection or heart closure or cortisol, high cortisol levels, which really the, the, the science on the screen is showing you, when I am in a space of high cortisol and I'm getting this flooded response from my nervous system to fight or to flee, what's really happening is all the blood in my body is shunting to my internal organs. That means that things like respiration are going to be shunted. That means like things like awareness or mindfulness is going to be shunted. And so what this study is showing us that the mind body practice of this diaphragmatic breathing, remember we had the circle on the last slide, think of a circle as an inhale and an exhale with no hold at all. Let's do a couple of these together right now. And then we'll go back to the science. Inhale through your nose, belly rises. Exhale through your mouth, belly falls. One more with no pause. Draw this circle with me. You don't need to be a scientist to understand that the breath can set you free from stress. And the breath is actually a direct component to your sympathetic nervous system and to the fat that we carry on our bodies. So if this is true, if we breathe like a circle, like you and I just did, what's actually going on? What's going on in the body? that is a physiological representation of the physiological action of the breath. Remember I talked about that lever earlier in the presentation. It is the only automatic or autonomic response that we have for our body. You can't digest your own food. You can't raise your own core temperature unless you're Wim Hof. People are still trying to figure out how he can do that. There's so many things in your body, multiple, multiple things in your body that are happening automatically. But here's the beautiful thing about breath. And this is why we're here today. It is a secret weapon. It is a secret lever that most people don't know about. And it happens right here. So you can see the, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic branches and the vagus nerve. Obviously, we know from the Zen device, there's an innervation in the left ear. What's happening here, when you take a big breath in through your nose, you're activating sympathetic. When you exhale, and especially audibly through your mouth. So if you and I did this breath together, inhale through your nose. That's sympathetic. Exhale. Ah. That's parasympathetic. Most of us, the reason we use a device like Zen or the reason we're drawn to breath work is because our lives are too tonic. Our lives are not stimulated in the way that our body wants for homeostasis. And so in the respiratory system, this diaphragmatic breathing that I talked about a few slides ago, the diaphragm is actually this dome-shaped muscle. Now, most people think the diaphragm is in the belly. It's actually right below the lungs. It's a dome-shaped muscle. It goes 360 degrees all the way around the body. By the way, we have four diaphragms, not just one. I know you're like, four diaphragms. Most people don't know that either. We talk about that in the breathe program. We'll mention at the end, when you breathe in and when you breathe out, this dome-shaped muscle 
your diaphragm. It is contracting and it is coming back home. It is contracting and it is coming back home and opening and a closing. Well, guess what? These nerves right here that innervate all the way from the brain back down the spinal column into what's called the enteric nervous system, which is a whole separate nervous system. It's your second brain. It's your gut. That's what's going on when you are physically pushing with your breath on the nerve endings of not just the vagus nerve, but also all the nerve endings of the CRSF fluid, the, the cerebral spinal fluid that is going from your pelvis all the way to your head. There's so much going on here. You can tell that I like to dork out about this. I love science. I love spirit. The take home for you to learn here is all of these little lines, all of these little nerve endings have a physical correlation to the diaphragm that sits right there under the lungs. So for, for lack of a better term, when you breathe in and breathe out, these nerve endings are getting pressed upon, physically pressed upon. When you press on the vagus nerve endings, you are getting complete shift over to the parasympathetic nervous system. Now, are you excited about breathing? I know that I am. There's somebody that asked, what is homeostasis? Homeostasis is this counterpoint where on one side we have fight or flight, and on one side we have rest or digest. Now that's just one example in the automatic nervous system, but in the body, we have a gut that has positive flora and we have flora that is more dysbiotic. What does that mean? In every single system of the body, the body as a whole holistically is trying to achieve a maximum output with the least amount of energy spent. So that homeostasis is the center point of your entire physiology, how all of your systems work together. And the way that we complement homeostasis is through stimulating the body the way that it was designed to be stimulated. In our modern world, as you know, in modernity, it is stimulating us in ways where we're on our phones, we're on our screens, we're inside with no light. We're in a constant drip of stress. If anybody's ever gotten IV, imagine if you had stress in a bag and that stress was put right here into your arm. And all day long, you just had one drip at a time of stress coming in. You would not have homeostasis. Homeostasis is, remember that center point, that balance point where all the systems in your body are regulated together, where you're putting out the most quality of life and the most energy at the least cost. So that's a really big thing to focus on here as, as we talk about breathing, because breath work, yes, we just did it right now, but it's actually three different ways that you can experience the healing power of breath work. One of them is meditative. One of them is acute. And one of them is cathartic. Meditative breathing is about somewhere between seven to 21 minutes long. Think of these breathing practices as like a daily morning or a daily evening practice where you would use it to scrub and clean all the things that you're either stressed out about or that are giving you, which is anxiety, or that are giving you rumination on the past. We are going to talk about this device and how it pairs into the breathing. So just hang with me here because all of this, no matter what, this is what we're talking about with the default mode network. The default mode network is something we'll mention later on. It's super imperative for you to understand if you're wanting to actually let go of weight. The default mode network also plays a role in our stress response and in storing fat, which we'll talk about. Acute breathing. Remember we talked about the first one. The first one was our meditation breathing. That's the longer. Acute breath is like, show of hands, is anybody nervous about public speaking? I've, I've even heard that, okay, someone raised their hand. I've heard that uh, in some research, fear of speaking is actually the same as the fear of death. Like it feels the same way to our nervous system. So in my breathe program and, and in traveling the world and going to Thailand and learning from all these different masters, I, I synthesized the best ways that we can use very quick practices. Actually, I, I have three to seven minutes around the slide, but it could be one to three minutes or three to seven minutes long. Now, these are designed to get you out of fight or flight right now. So if any of you are, are with us and you get consistently stressed over the same input, let's say the same traffic, the same person, the same argument and relationships, been there, all of these things, like they, they, are, they are these opportunities for us to grow, but we're not going to be able to grow if we're stuck in the stress. We have to find a way to get out of the stress. And this is where the acute breathing helps us to shift right now. Lastly is cathartic breathing. So if anybody has seen like a Wim Hof on YouTube or where people are convulsing, 
a really good, um, I'm thinking about this wild, wild country was a documentary on Netflix and I'm neither pro nor against Netflix, but this documentary is wild. And they were doing these crazy breathing processes in there. And I thought, oh my gosh, I hope this doesn't turn people off to breath work because catharsis breath work is probably the most overused. And honestly, in my opinion, um, most unsafe practicum, unless you're working with a skilled facilitator that has had certifications and that has had actual experience in leading people. So today we're going to go over this, uh, the meditative and the acute, not so much the cathartic. I do not recommend that anyone does cathartic breath work. Obviously you're going to want to check with your physician anyways, for all of these pieces, just like you would when you wanted to use the device or, or any, anything you're doing physically, you're going to want to check with your physician. So let's get into this. We already did the circular breath together, right? Where we breathe like a circle. Let's practice a box breath together. So a box breath, you can see the box on the right. You can see the circle on the left. The circle breath is what we just did. Let's do it again together just so you know and feel the difference. You're going to breathe in through your nose, belly rises, breathe out through your mouth, belly falls. Let's do that two times. Breathe like a circle with me. Once more. Twenty one of those will change your entire day. If you do 21 of those circular breaths, what we're doing with the circular breath, is much different than the box breath. And by the way, we're still going to tie this in to how to use the nerve stimulation just in a moment here. The box is really interesting because with the box, we're going to breathe in through our nose for four. We're going to hold for four. We're going to breathe out for four. And we're going to hold for four at the bottom. So let's do two rounds of this together. Breathe in through your nose for four. Hold for four. Exhale for four. Pause for four. Inhale nose four. Hold four. Exhale audibly for four. <sighs> Hold for four. Take a big breath in through your nose. Let it go. <sighs> Two different types of breathing. Why do we do this? What is the scientific and also emotional quotient? What is the reason why we would use a circle or a box breath? Let's go over this. When you do a breath hold, Science has shown that intermittent hypoxia, which is really what we're doing when we do both circular and box, I'll talk more about the difference in a moment here. Science is showing this, that not just from an immunity perspective, but also nitric oxide that be nitric oxide synthase specifically, that could be created from doing longer breath retention holds. So imagine if you were to do a 10 second in hold, and this is something you want to do after you work in the program. You don't want to do this right away. This can be very challenging up front. Let's say you did a 10 second inhale, a 10 second hold, a 10 second exhale, and a 10 second hold. The value of doing that is the more that you can train your body to be calm, right? And again, we are still going to talk about this in a moment. The more you can train your body to be calm when it comes to feeling stress, but also being conscious of your breath, that is what has the most dramatic impact on your immunity and also on this, this NO, this nitric oxide synthase. This is important because the breathing that we do is 70% of how we cleanse the body from toxins. 70%, th think about that. When you're breathing properly, you are breathing out all of the gunk, all of the pollutants, all of the stuff that gets trapped in you, you're actually excreting it through your breath. Isn't that interesting? Maybe this is the first time you're, you're hearing this and maybe things are starting to connect here with you now. Like, okay, if, I'm, if I identify myself as a reverse breather or somebody that, that actually just needs some guidance in how to lovingly breathe properly for my stress, does that also mean that I'm not detoxifying? Because if the other 30% of our detox is from bladder and bowels, the lion's share of our respiration detoxification comes by doing that circular or that box breath like we just did. So if we're getting this benefit and we're also, as I talked about earlier, we're getting this nitric oxide stimulation. This is what helps oxidative stress reduction. So reducing that oxidative stress, you know, when you cut a apple in half and the apple turns brown after a while, oxygen's corrosive. 
So that's what's going on with your body. If you can learn how to breathe properly and do the box and the circle and the breath hole retentions, it has a direct and honestly immediate impact on the health of you, on the stress of you, which then has a immediate impact on how much fat your body stores, which we're going to talk about. And I promise we'll get there. I keep peppering. I keep exciting myself. I'm exciting all of us because this is so fascinating to me. I absolutely love this stuff. This is what's running here. I talked about the default mode network. What's running in the background, this ancient system that used to signal us when tigers were coming at us. Although most of us, unless you live in the jungle or unless you're watching from Africa and you have tigers in your backyard, most of us don't, most of us don't have tigers in our lives, but the nervous system doesn't know any different. You can see here in these brain scans that the prefrontal cortex, the amygdala, and the posterior cingulate, these are the portions. These are the, these are the three big portions of the brain that are lit up when the eyes tell the brain or when the receptors on the skin or when we're auditory, per, when we're perceptive in an auditory way of stress, this is what lights up the brain. This default mode network, this has a direct impact on how much body fat you store because this has a direct signaling mechanism to that sympathetic nervous system. We'll talk about a little bit more of that too. So if we want freedom from stress, which is essentially what the Zen device and breath work can give us, then really what we're doing is we're turning down the volume on the default mode network. You can see here the amygdala, the prefrontal and the posterior cingulate. There are many other structures in the, the default mode network, but these are the main three. When you're not paying attention to your environment, when you're not present and focused on what it is that you're doing right now, this is really the, the spot that alerts your brain that pulls you out of the present moment because it's a perceived danger on the outside. So in other words, the default mode network mostly should just be calm. But you saw this here that these structures in the default mode network for most of us at rest, which is when they should be turned off, these are activated. Now, why is that? It's because, and this is a study here, default mode network meditation and age associated brain changes. What can we learn from the impact of mental training on well-being as a psychotherapeutic approach meditation, otherwise known as you and I doing breath work together. The default mode network shows a high level simultaneous activation during rest while their activity diminishes during the performance of goal directed tasks. So what does this mean? It means that when we are focused and the default mode network is functioning as nature designed it to, those scans would be almost non-existent. These scans would be turned down, but they're not because most of us live life without breath. And when we live life without breath, when we're just breathing like this, or maybe every once in a while, you know that you're a breather. When your brain's going to look like this, by the way. If every hour or so you find yourself going like this, it's because you've been starving yourself. You've been starving yourself from your breath. Now here in the program, you can see um, a version of myself. This is when I lived in Sedona. I live in Austin, Texas now, but I still do the same practice. If we want freedom from stress, we have to understand what the default mode network actually is, which we've done a good job of together. But now we got to talk about this, the combination of breathing exercises where we're doing different practices like the acute and the meditative Maybe it's the, the alternate nostril breathing or using different modalities that I've created from combinations of box breathing and circular breathing. In other words, the, nor, the more novelty that we can give our body, the faster we can train the default mode network to turn the volume down on itself. And when we turn the volume down on itself, then we can start getting what I call synergy stacking, right? You can't ride two horses unless you've really mastered how to ride one. So if you want to use the Zen, and this is really the, the most exciting part of this presentation. So please ask any questions in the chat. Um, someone said, will there be a recording webinar later? Yes, but stick around because you can get your questions in real time. What is the synergistic power of this device plugged into my left ear? Well, I'll tell you this. The most important thing you need to know is breath work on its own is powerful. Mm. The vagus nerve stimulation on its own, very powerful. They're both beautiful tools and they both have a direct impact that we've already explored on your cortisol, your stress, which has a direct impact on how your body stores fat. So the most important thing you need to know is when you take one tool on its own and you stack it with another, that separately 
they may not be either as different or as powerful. You get synergy stacking. Synergy stacking is when you start pairing things together that have the same goal in mind. And when you put them together, you can actually experience something way different than you would if they were on their own. And so what this really means for us to tie it home, this is like the, we're on the top of the mountain together. Okay. It's all going to be easy from here. I promise that was a lot of heady stuff, but it was important to know, especially if you're here, I'm guessing if you're here, you're, you're dealing with something and you're trying to figure out why you're dealing with it. Well, that's completely understandable because that's life. Life has brought you here to really look at your stress, look at your fat loss. So to, so to combine these two, to give us the answer, this vagus nerve stimulation and breath work, you can see the photo on the left where we take the application. And what I like to do with the application is I like, I like to use the sensation mode. When I use the sensation mode, I plug it in. I actually use the highest setting. I'm sure that there's a lot of resources and Q&A on the website. You're going to find your own setting based on your own practice. I put the setting up all the way high. You have to make sure that the, the conduit, the little earpiece is wet, obviously, for it to conduct electricity. Here's what's happening. You're getting stimulation through the ear. You're using specific breath practices that we'll touch on. You're getting a one, two side approach that'll allow not just vagus nerve stimulation, but also a more potent lever being pulled to that parasympathetic side of your nervous system. Here's why. This is the ANS. And don't worry, I have a, um, a different screen that I can send out. We can zoom in a little bit on this. Here, I can just zoom in. Hey, I'm going to zoom in right here so y'all can see this. We've talked about this quite a bit. Someone asked earlier about homeostasis. And really, you know, the core of homeostasis is that center point. And isn't it beautiful that in nature's grand wisdom that she divided us in this autonomic system into the fight or flight and the rest and digest. Now this, I'm going to give credit. This is actually from a, a colleague and a fellow podcaster of mine, Mike Mutzel. He wrote the belly fat effect. And the reason he put this in his book is because this is a core system that has a direct. And honestly, I would be suffice to say from my training background and from 500 plus episodes on the wellness and wisdom podcast, talking with some of the most, you know, intelligent doctors, intelligent nutritionists on the planet. It all comes down to this. This is a really big one. This is what you, you really want to pay attention right now. Fight or flight increases heart rate. Fight or flight gives us bronchial dilation. Fight or flight stimulates glucose release. You see where I'm going here? Fight or flight on a hormonal cascade level is going to make you store more fat than you could ever even imagine. And you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, it's not just the food that I eat. Nope, it's not. There was a point in my life where I used to be 280 pounds. And the only thing that saved me was my understanding of this. This is why I'm so passionate about the wellness technology and the understanding of physiology because food only goes so far. What we want to be is we want to be because of modernity that I've talked about already. We want to be over on the right side. We want to be in the parasympathetic. This is what decreases our heart rate. This is what allows us to breathe, right? The constriction. This is what stimulates digestion. This is what gives us a lowering of cortisol. And so think about really what the autonomic system is. It's a seesaw. It's a seesaw where on one side, we want to fight. We're in fear. On the other side, we're loving. We're accepting of the present moment. So homeostasis is this really internal feedback loop, right? You can see it's a big circle over here. You'll see a lot of circles in, in this presentation because that's who we are. Whether you know it or not, you are already whole and complete right now. There's nothing that you need to heal within yourself. You actually just need to see it before it can be different. And that's a whole spiritual conversation that we explore in the podcast, but I just wanted to plant that seed for y'all right now. So in this autonomic system, in order for you to maintain your, your real body's health, you're going to have to use some tools, right? You're going to have to have a new way of being in the world. You're going to have to use the combination of this device, just like we've talked about and your breath, because you're getting that stacking, you're getting that synergy stacking that's going to pull you faster and more efficiently over to the rest and digest, which lowers cortisol. And then of course, that's what has the direct impact on your fat loss. So we talked about how to use these. We're actually going to do an exercise right now 
So this is says practice, right? We're going to do one practice together. And obviously, you know, this one won't be very advanced. Um, it's not going to be a very challenging breathwork practice, but we are going to go through this now for two minutes. So I'm going to set a timer and I want you to breathe with me, right? If at any point in time you feel unsafe, just stop. If you're watching in the car, first of all, you shouldn't be because this is a presentation that's live. So you should pull over if you're in the car. But do this with us right now. I'm standing, but go ahead and sit. When you breathe, you want to make sure that your knees are at or below your hips. So that's very key. Make sure that you're sitting with your knees at or below your hips. We're going to do two minutes together of circular breathing. And I may, depending on if there's any questions that pop up or anything that goes on, I may bring in something else like a breath hold retention or a box. So right now, everybody just do a scan of your body. We're going to make this practical. We're going to give you something really practical today you can go home with. Take a big breath in through your nose, belly rises. Breathe out through your mouth, belly falls. <sighs> Keep doing that with me. Couple more. Now keep going and focus on two and four. Inhale for two through your nose. Exhale four through your mouth. Keep going. On your own, inhaling for two, exhaling for four, keep going. Two more rounds, inhaling for two. One more together. Now return to your normal breath. You'll notice that I'm putting in the Zen device, right? I've already moistened the insert. I already have it turned on on the phone, on the application. You're picking a frequency that is best for you. And what's going on right now is we're going to do this now circular breath together. And you can even grab your phone or your device. And if you don't have it, don't worry. We're, we'll talk about how you can get involved at the end. Make sure that when you do this circular breathing, that your device is turned on, that you've enabled the frequency that's best for you. and that you've really felt like you are safe. That's the big one. Do you feel safe? If you don't feel safe, if this is not a good space for you to do this, don't do it. Okay. If you have any pre existing conditions, um, if you have a pacemaker, if a physician has told you not to do this, obviously don't do it. So let's do 10 circular breaths together. I can already feel the stimulation from the Zen in my ear now. 10 circular breaths together. Let's draw a circle. Inhale through your nose. <sighs> Last one. <sighs> Return to your normal breath. Feel the pulses in your ear. Feel the relaxation of your diaphragm pressing on the nerve endings from the vagus. Feel the stacking of the two modalities that we're doing now that are so potent on their own, but yet so much more potent as you do them. And you'll notice that there's something very magical happening in your body. I've never known anyone to do this. I talked to Amy about this last year. We came together to do this presentation this year. I haven't seen anyone do this before. I found it honestly by grace. I found it just by kind of having it find me. I start to feel not just the beauty of the Zen device and the, the stimulation from my ear, but I also start feeling the calming effects of my body getting super oxygenated. 
of my system shifting rapidly over to that parasympathetic. Take one more deep breath together. <sighs> Feels pretty good. Now you can see that when we're using this synergy stacking model, we are getting an incredible effect. And don't worry, I'll get to the, the Q&A right now. We're getting an incredible effect on an ancient problem, an ancient problem. And that is, what do I do when I don't feel good? What do I do when I don't feel good? Well, the way that we deal with that is that we take modernity or, or modern world and we apply ancient wisdom. One of the reasons why the Zen is so popular and probably why you're here is because you feel something right away when you use it. Am I right? Like you actually feel something immediately. And when we get that, that gratification, that instant gratification, what it's doing is it's giving us hope and courage to take more steps just like that in the future. So when we apply this ancient wisdom of our breath, and when we also use really, really medically grade devices like the Zen, we start pairing them together. We're taking all the parts of modernity that don't feel good, right? Like how technology can rob us of our time, like the phone or all the productivity systems. And we're actually using the other side of tech. We're using the, the, the modern technology to bring us back home to something very, very ancient. And that is the wisdom of the heart. A lot of the work of the HeartMath Institute talks about mirror neurons. Mirror neurons are something that are expressed when we see someone else in pain or when we see someone else in stress. The nerves in our body and the, the cells and literally the structure in our heart starts to mirror whoever we're with. So if we want to have less modern stress, if we want to have less modern stress and less modern body fat, what is the universe? If you are believing in a higher power or not, I do. You believe in whatever you want. What is science? What is, what is our own intuition trying to tell us? What is all of this about? It is this one thing. If I can breathe, I can choose. If you can breathe, you can choose. You can choose anything at all from a more regulated, emotionally regulated, mentally regulated place. You can start to choose whether you're in that sympathetic or parasympathetic because of the conscious training that you take yourself through in something like a breathwork program or in something like a synergy stacking with a device that on its own is very powerful. But when you start to stack these things that modernity gives us, applications, phone, wellness tech, you start to realize something really beautiful about yourself. And that is you are way more powerful, way more powerful than you can imagine. The only thing is, is you just forgotten. And it's not a shaming thing. I forget too. If you can breathe, you can choose. We have over a thousand students in the breathe program. All of them come to the program for some type of a reason that brought you here today. And so I'm giving something very special that we'll talk about in just a moment, but I do want to answer some questions. So um, L Moore said, how often should you use breath work and Zen? This is awesome. So it's not about necessarily how often it's the, the, the question and the answer are actually tied together like two vines. How often should you do it? You should only do breath work or the Zen when you get a signal from your physiology that it's time. Here's what I mean by that. When you get a signal from your physiology, whether it's profuse sweating or unconscious cravings, where you go to the fridge, I'm going to go full screen here because this is really important. I'm actually going to stop my screen share to answer this question before I get to the last ones. So let me stop my share. When you have unconscious cravings for food, um, maybe even for things that are, I can't even mention on this webinar, right? Like things that are very, very, very challenging, um, things that are very unhealthy for you, right? When you have cravings, when you have something that's pulling you away from your center, the best thing you could ever do is take a breath. But an even better thing that you can do is to pair this device with your breath. If you are going on a stage, you can do this. If you are having lack of sleep, I noticed a question about sleep in there, which I'll get to. You can do this. Remember, your physiology is going to tell you. You have to build over the course of time. And we do this in the breathe program in three weeks. It's about three weeks time where you start building this intuitive faculty where you can understand how your body feels 
And you can actually listen to your body instead of blunting it with more caffeine, more sugar, more TV. I mean, I love Yellowstone, honestly. Yellowstone's amazing. But but there's just certain things in life that that we really don't we don't know till we know the other side. And so what I'm going to share with you right now is is twofold. There was a question that I'm noticing here about sleep. Um, let me go in the Q and A. Um, Rebecca says, I like to use Zen to help me sleep. And Anonymous says, how many breaths should we do in a row? These are all beautiful questions. So let's talk about, let's break down um, how often should you use breath work in Zen? We've touched on that. Your physiology is going to tell you. You could start it twice a week. If you just want an answer for your conscious mind, just start it twice a week. Do it twice a week, train yourself from there. And then you might be like me and do it five to six to 10 times a week, depending on how stressful things are. I have a... Um, my partner's pregnant and, and we have a 19 month old son. So I do this quite a bit. Um, and then that dovetails into the next question, which is about sleep, right? Um, I like to use Zen to help me sleep. Are there any benefits to doing breath work during my sleep routine? Yes. Here's how you do it. You find the same frequency here. Then you're going to do what's called a four, seven, eight breath. Inhale through your nose for four, hold for seven, audible, slow exhale for eight. So inhale through your nose for four, hold for seven audible exhale for eight, do that 10 to 20 times paired with the stimulation here. Oh my gosh, you will be out like a light. It will be amazing. I promise you that. How many breaths should we do in a row? It depends. I can't necessarily offer you that types of guidance right here because you're not in the program. I don't have the ability to have you practice it and then give me feedback. And that would be out of integrity for me as a practitioner. So I am going to offer that we all do this program together because not only does the breath work, as we've already learned, have a significant impact on your stress, but also the, the pairing of the two, this synergy stacking is really all the marbles. I mean, that is like the best thing you could possibly do. So you're probably all wondering, okay, what's this about? It's about this. This program that I've created stacks perfectly with the Zen device. And here's why. I've given Amy access, by the way. So if you've already been in communication with Amy's team, or if you've been curious about like, how do I do this? How do I do this on a larger level, on a more sustainable level? The best thing I could tell you is when we allow ourselves to just commit to something, whether it's like the breathwork.io, you can go there now. The code is Zen25. It's a code that's specific to us. So, you know, all I ask is that you only share that code with people that, you know, you really love and you really want to help. Um, the reason I ask that is because there are so many people out there that if they just get that little nudge, if they just get that small nudge to do something different, their life can totally change, including yourself, including my life that changed from doing this work. And honestly, the most exciting thing about this is at the end of the month, in this program, we are actually adding a very, very special module where I'm going to show you in real time how to do some specific practices with the Zen pairing, the vagus nerve stimulation, and the breathe program. It's a 21-day program. I guide you through every step of the way. It's an incredible program for the thousand plus students that are in there. I know in my heart of hearts, it'll be an incredible program for you too. So this has been an exceptional exceptional time with y'all. I'll tell you that this is the, the first time I've ever offered something like this to a community like yours. And the reason I wanted to is because I, I thought about all the ways that in our marketing world and in our media world, there's just, there's just an ocean of information, right? And so hopefully that by the end of this presentation, you have understood it's not just about you buying a new thing. <clears throat> it's not just about you committing with your dollars. It's about you committing with your breath. It's about you committing with your energy. So if you're getting a intuitive hit, or if you're curious about this, head over to breathwork.io, use the code Zen 25. That's a special coupon that I made just for this community and Amy and everyone. It's just been such a joy. And I want to just pause here for a moment because a lot of people, whenever it comes to doing something new in life, there's three things that come up, right? It's time, it's money, or it's a belief. It's time, money, or belief. So everybody's got three to seven minutes. There's an app on the phone. You can use it for three to seven minutes. Everybody's got three to seven minutes. So I guess we can throw time out. Then it's money. 
I've already given you a discount. And by the way, this is way cheaper than you taking out your wife or husband or even yourself on a weekend, which is amazing. And then there's the beliefs, which actually, you know, after watching our presentation together, I really can't see how anybody could have a belief that breath work paired with wellness technology could not work. Because if there's any beliefs coming in right now that are about you not doing the next step or not pairing these modalities or not taking action, really what it comes down to is a belief. And it's not to shame anyone. I'm not, I'm not saying that I even know what's best for you. And by the way, you don't even have to purchase the program or purchase anything, but the results may stay the same. And so if you are truly wanting to regulate yourself, if you are truly wanting to let go of weight, you've got to address the psychosomatic connection. You've got to address the psycho neuroimmunology. If you don't, your physiology will respond in accordance to whatever stress is coming in. So from my heart to yours, thank you so much for being here with me. Please share this webinar, share this webinar with as many people as you can share this presentation with somebody who's been really struggling to lose weight, right? Maybe I can even somehow we can do another presentation later on this year. I can show you pictures of what I used to look like when I was 280 pounds. You know, I come from a place of true understanding. This is not me on the top of the mountain telling you what's best for you. My intention with this presentation was you to just make the honest choice for yourself about what do you actually want? You know, what are the results that you actually want? So from my heart to yours, thank you for being here. And it looks like we have just a few minutes for some more questions. I'm just going to chime in real quick, Josh, that, I mean, just tremendous. You and I could probably sit and talk for hours anyway. Um, I just want to touch on the, the, the dual meaning of letting go of this weight. Yes. Right. So especially going back to the picture of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, that automatic nervous system that you talked about. Yes. It's, there's so much of this. That's not just the physical weight that we have, it's the weight that weighs us down. It's the thoughts, it's that self-deprecation, it's even empathy. So I like it that you mentioned the yeah. mirror neurons because there are some people who are so empathetic that they just take on other people's emotions along with their own. Yeah. And at some point, breath, the word work, breath work, any of this, it, we just, we have to start training ourselves differently. Whatever tools are good for you is what you need to use. Um, but I just wanted to make those. That's comments. beautiful. That's, that's apps 100% yes to what you just said. Mm -hmm. And, um, Rebecca asked, you know, will Zen help make breath work easier? Now this is interesting. And I notice, um, that's a good question, Rebecca. Honestly, all these questions are great. Um, and don't worry, we'll get to the four, seven, eight method about sleep too. And then we're talking about exercise, someone else. So yes, the reason why I believe that Zen will make breath work easier is because if you think about it, what, and I've never been asked this question, by the way, ever. So this is like in real time, just based on my own anecdotal understanding and, and working with my students. I, I believe that it will make it easier because if you think about the, the, the science of when we are shifted over to the, the sympathetic, we are, we are constricted in our breathing. And so what is stopping someone from sleeping? It's probably because they're not either following the natural circadian wake lights uh, system that nature designed for us, or they've had so much caffeine that it's shifting them over. Maybe a big one for this, by the way, Rebecca, is when you have caffeine past noon. When you have caffeine past noon, caffeine has a longer half-life than most people realize. And so caffeine can keep you up very late. So that's the first thing. The second thing is when you're using the Zen, and you're getting that direct connection through the left ear, stimulating the vagus nerve, you are in a way supporting yourself to get that same innervation in the enteric nervous system like you would if you were doing belly breaths. So the two work hand in hand. I don't have any hardcore scientific data to prove this to you, but I, but I will say like it, for me, it matters. There's been many a night where I'll just lay on my back you know, take my spray bottle, spray the, spray the headphone, put it in, put it on max and do my circular breathing. And I think the reason why this is so exciting for us is because, you know, it can also be an external locus of control. It can be, if, if Rebecca, you struggle with sleep, maybe I'm guessing, I don't want to project, but if you struggle with sleep, it's probably because you have a looping mind 
or you're over caffeinated or you're overstimulated or your sleeping environment is not conducive to sleep hygiene. It's one of those things. So yes, absolutely. Zen will make breath work easier, but we got to address the other parts as well. Um, anonymous said, are there benefits to doing breath work before or during exercise? Yes. I actually enjoy doing breath work post exercise. The reason is, is because you're already going to be naturally respirating at a higher rate when you do cardio or when you do strength training, I've never actually done breath work before exercise, unless I was really stressed out. If you're stressed out and you feel like you, you couldn't concentrate and be safe in your movements, then yeah, you know, breath work would be good before exercise. But the reason we do it after doing it after is really great because your body is in a heightened state, right? You have a lot of positive catecholamines going on. You have all kinds of uh, physiological expressions that are happening where your body is sweating, you're detoxing, your breathing is probably at a higher rate. So to come back down and reintegrate to your normal life, you know, maybe you're on a quick lunch break and you're at work and you got to stop sweating so you can take a shower and not be sweaty in your work clothes, um, doing some box breathing specifically. Circular breathing, this is one thing we did not cover in the presentation. So for all y'all that are still here, kudos. Circular breathing is actually what brings energy up. So if you feel like you need more energy throughout the day, do the circular breathing. If you feel like you're stressed out and anxious, and Navy Special Warfare uh, has been trained to do this. I learned this from Mark Devine and Dan Brule. Mark Devine was a Navy SEAL commander. And so special ops will do box breathing when they want to calm down, when they're feeling anxious. And so when you're done working out, the best thing you could ever do is a box breath, start with four seconds. You know, there's no real need to go more than four or five seconds on your framework. Um, so I hope that answered your question. Now, one thing I haven't done actually is I haven't paired the Zen with breath after a workout. So that could be like a cool experiment. We could try that. And then the very last question is, does the four, seven, eight method work to get kids in bed on time? I don't know. I'll train my son to do that when he can understand. <laughs> so that, that was a really a, good question. A narrow good. window of control there. Yes. I there's only so much. I guess if the kid understands words, like if they're, if they're able to give and receive information, then, then yeah, it might work. Um, and honestly, there's a book, there's a cool reference. Uh, there's a book called belly breathe for kids. And I do read that to my son and it's like got animals and shapes telling, telling children how to breathe. So I think that's it, Amy, for questions. And we're almost at the hour, Yeah, but it's been awesome. awesome. Yes. I will. I, I just want to advocate for the breathwork.io program. I have, I've listened to Josh. So he teaches these classes. And if you, if you're not just lulled by his voice, because he has this, this golden voice, um, it really is such the episodes, the sessions, the trainings are so good, very simple, um, quick, easy to follow. So I really do recommend that everybody just get control. And it, the first step is really paying attention. Um, I think yeah. I'm going to start my husband on this program because he actually holds his breath all the time. So uh, recognizing those things, I think is just really important. Yes. It's been a joy too. You know, I remember when we were talking about this last year and I'm so glad that it came to fruition because there are so many people in this world right now that they, they just unknowingly have trained themselves out of their normal state. And, and it's human. We're human beings. You know, we, we all have very full lives. So just introducing something new, like a training that you can be accountable for is very powerful because it'll give you a different result, quite frankly. I agree. Thank you so much for being our inaugural co-host on this webinar. Thank you so much, Josh. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the whole year. I know that we'll do some more things together. Thank you, Amy, so much for having me. And thanks to Nuvana for making such an awesome product. And also thank you to everybody that showed up here. You know, we had yes. quite a bit of people on the, the webinar and thank you for everyone that's tuned in to watch. So, you know, share this with people that you think might benefit. Thank you.